Welcome Trinidad and Tobago to our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited. I'm Nicola Barito. Let's take a look at the headlines. Prime Minister launches 2012 Jubilee Anniversary Celebrations. Tourism Minister announces initiatives for the country's 50th anniversary of independence. And in our sport feature, two Pro League officials praise government support for the competition. And now for our top story. Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Bissasa says Trinidad and Tobago has a lot to look forward to in the future. The Prime Minister officially launched the 50th anniversary of independence celebrations at Queen's Hall. Rina Barth tells us more. Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Bissasa says, in the midst of the inevitable encounter with challenges and difficulty, perseverance is the key. She was speaking at the launch of the 50th anniversary of the Independence Logo Unveiling Ceremony, where she also paid tribute to previous outstanding leaders of Trinidad and Tobago. The past has shown us that growth, development and progress can at times arise out of conflict and challenges. There have always been differences, and for as long as there is growth and progress, there will be differences. Even amidst the differences, Decisions were finally made, decisions which have helped to shape our nation's character and which have molded the face that we show to the world, one of unity and one of determination. The past also throws up the names which we must always remember. We must remember Dr. Eric Williams, the founding father of our country. We must remember Dr. Rudranath Kapileu, the first leader of the opposition of independent Trinidad and Tobago. We must remember Sir Ellis Clark, who was a principal architect of our 1962 constitution. The Honorable Prime Minister also highlighted the importance of compromise in leading an effective government. I emphasize compromise here today because I want to state that it is not a dirty word. Compromise is not defeat, nor is it surrender. In deciding the future of people and a country, no one person or government can claim to have all the answers all of the time. Compromise in a process of consultation, which holds firm to establish fundamental principles, is and will remain a noble and worthy exercise. But what is also important in compromise is that those who are empowered to make the final decision must possess the will to take that decision and carry through. Mrs. Pusad Bisasa also boasted of the many blessings which she says are bestowed on the sister isle republic of Trinidad and Tobago. We are the southernmost islands in the Caribbean. We have been blessed with very rich natural resources, spectacular beauty, and a very abundant supply of talent of a culturally diverse people. We are known for having gifted in the world our invention of the steel pan. We are world renowned for our music, religious, cultural festivals, and indeed for carnival. And many of our citizens have etched their names and that of Trinidad and Tobago in the annals of world history. The Prime Minister advises that with the recent discovery of oil, Trinidad and Tobago can look forward to a brighter future. She adds that at the age of 50, the nation is now ready to spread its wings and soar as its best days are ahead. The discovery of approximately 50 billion barrels of crude oil, 80 million barrels I'm now advised when we put the two together, one fully owned by state through Petrotrin, the other involving an equity stake by Petrotrin, has placed us in a better position as we continue our development trust. We can therefore approach the future with greater hope and optimism. And we must commit now more than ever to summon our strengths to keep the peace to drive towards higher productivity and to harness our resources to create a stronger Trinidad and Tobago. At the age of 50, our nation is now ready to spread its wings and to soar. We must heal all wounds and build our resilience. We must diffuse the present pressures and agree on a new foundation of mutual engagement, acceptance and trust. We must convert disappointments and errors into a pool of knowledge such as to educate our future. And we must fashion a future, not just of prosperity for all, but one in which dignity and equity are the natural deliverables of every policy. Vina Barath, News 4. 
We take a break. When we come back, the planning minister says the creative industries will help the diversification process. Stay with us. Come to our beaches. We're looking out for you. Thank you for staying with us. Minister of Planning and the Economy says Trinidad and Tobago's creative industries are now poised for tremendous growth over the next few years and is one key area for diversification of the economy. The minister spoke in an interview with News 4 shortly after the 50th anniversary of Independence logo launch at Queen's Hall. John Victor tells us more. Minister of Planning and the Economy Dr. Botawari says Trinidad and Tobago's cultural products and the creative industries are two key areas targeted for economic diversification. Speaking after the launch of Jubilee Anniversary Celebrations at Queen's Hall, Minister Tawari says there has been steady growth in this sector over the years. It has a lot of um, what you call intellectual property content and which is of course comes from the human imagination and which is an indigenous product essentially coming out of the people and all of these cultural and creative products also tend to be in, even when you use technology, very labor intensive and very mind and creative intensive. And I think these are some of the things that we want to look at in terms of diversification. Mr. Tawari says the setting up of an arts council was on the cards. He also highlighted two major events that will highlight the country's rich cultural diversity. One is Napa, in which we have about seven or eight um, 90 minute no intermission concerts free to the public and we have some of the best that we have to offer in Trinidad and Tobago across the cultural uh, landscape and then we have groundings with our elders in the town hall in Port of Spain and that is being led by the artist coalition and basically what we're trying to do there is to basically bring those people who have given a lot to culture to begin to engage and to converse with the population and we will film a lot of that and therefore it becomes as well a cultural and historical product. So we're going to try to use this opportunity really to bring our people into the, not just the creative process but into the production. Minister Tawari noted the creative sector at the moment contributes 4% of GDP and the government is looking at increasing that to 8%. So we've set a modest target, but we feel that we can build on something. In 2000 and in the year 2000, the amount of money that came from the creative sector in terms of net foreign exchange was about 35 million. In 2011, it was 50 million. Now that's not a lot of money, but it shows that we have the potential for growth. And it shows that we have the makings of something that can be built on. And as I said, that is not something you have to import. That is not something you have to buy in the store. All right, that comes from our people and it comes out of their imagination. In this regard, the fashion industry is already working on a project for Fashion Week in October this year. John Victor, News 4. 
The International Atomic Energy Agency has recommended further treatment for three patients who received radiation treatment at the Brown Lara Cancer Treatment Center. Health Minister Dr. Fuad Khan is maintaining that the agency's findings did not indicate that the follow-up treatment was a result of these patients receiving radiation therapy doses in excess of what was prescribed to them. We got details on that from Verna Barath. Health Minister Dr. Fuad Khan is disclosing that the International Atomic Energy Agency, the IAEA, has indicated that three patients who received radiation treatment at the Brian Lara Cancer Treatment Center should undergo further treatment. He was providing an update on an International Atomic Energy Agency report. Which was a report from the IAEA that was brought here on behalf of the Ministry of Health to investigate the alleged overdose of patients at the Brian Lara Cancer Treatment Center. We received this document approximately four weeks ago and we were in the process of putting a team together to look at the findings of the report and to determine the way forward for approximately three patients who needed further treatment. Dr. Khan is, however, assuring that the agency's findings did not indicate that this follow-up treatment was as a result of any radiation overdose. He says the other 27 patients were recommended to continue their current treatment programs. He said he neglected to include copies of the patient records in the report due to patient confidentiality issues. We are still in the process of looking at this report and determining exactly the way forward for some of the patients, as I said, three of them so far, who may need further treatment. The other 27 patients that were looked at or investigated, the most recommendations that were given were to just continue follow up. The IAEA team had been invited to Trinidad by the Health Ministry last July to provide assistance in the ministry's investigation of the alleged radiation overexposure at the clinic over a period of 18 months up to June 2010. Vuna Bharath, News 4. When we come back, the Tourism Minister says his ministry will play a key role in the 50th anniversary independence celebrations. <music> Hi guys, I'm Wayne. I'm here today to give you all advice on what you should do and what you should not do in order to have a good beach day. First of all, learn to swim now, man. A little dog paddle is all it might take to save your life. Swim where the lifeguard is on patrol. And remember, stay between those red and yellow flags. Wait at least one hour after eating before going back to swim. Report any dangers that you may see to the lifeguard. And if in trouble, get on your back and float, wave your hand, and call for help. Now if you can't float, that's where we, the lifeguards, come in. Now to give you some pointers as to things you should never do. Never go swimming alone. Never fake actions or call for help. We we'll never know if it's true. Next thing, and we gone our way. But seriously, we lifeguards are here to save lives. Remember, you have your responsibilities as well. Welcome back to News 4. Tourism Minister Dr. Rupert Griffith has outlined a number of initiatives being undertaken by the Ministry of Tourism to attract nationals living abroad back home for the country's 50th anniversary independence celebrations. The Honorable Minister Griffith spoke with News 4 after Monday's launch at Queen's Hall. John Victor has the story. Trinidad and Tobago gets set to celebrate its jubilee anniversary of independence. The Ministry of Tourism is working closely with the Ministry of Planning and Development which is driving the plans for the 2012 celebrations. Tourism Minister Rupert Griffith says his ministry is liaising with foreign ministries in other countries and Trinidad and Tobago missions abroad. They want to know what's happening, what are we doing, 
what can they be involved in and they want to know about the significance of this 50, 50 years. So for some months now we have been looking at our 50th anniversary and we've been putting several programs and things in place. Many of them tourism to return our diaspora people back home to participate in the uh, program. Minister Griffith said there are a number of initiatives that the government has undertaken. He adds the winning logo for the Jubilee celebrations was indicative of the direction the country is taking in terms of its growth. The one we chose is really keeping in line with where Trinidad and Tobago is going. It's, it's, it's rising. We, over the last 50 years, we have come a long way. Um, we have a new century, we have a new government, and we have a lot of new initiatives, diversification of the economy, new, new initiatives in tourism, new initiatives in manufacturing, and even in the energy sector, in education, just about every ministry. So it is a nation that's rising. So we thought that fit, um, that logo fit well with the kinds of concept and the direction we are going, a nation that's rising. The minister elaborated on plans for the Jubilee celebrations. There are several things. We are going to have a lighting festival, a festival of lights, where we're lighting up the whole of Brad Lara Promenade. We are going to have a 50 wood essay. Um, we are going to be giving several incentives, particularly to the school with um, various projects, school projects. Uh, we have committees looking at those. But I think the biggest project the Ministry of Tourism will have this year is that we are hosting the World International Culinary Competition. So at the end of October this year, we will be crowning, crowning the world national champion in culinary. We are getting a lot of interest from all over the world. Se um, countries willing to sponsor their chef to compete for this national award. Minister Griffith revealed that a panel of international judges will adjudicate at this event scheduled for the Queen's Park Savannah in October. John Victor, News 4. Time now for a sport feature. All stakeholders involved in football agree that a professional football league is vital for the nation's advancement on the international stage. The Ministry of Sport is one such stakeholder and continues to fully support the TNT Pro League. One of the league's most successful clubs is W Connection FC. News 4 sat down with the club's coach and president who told us what the league means to their organization. W Connection FC recently won the 2011-2012 season of the TT Pro League with some final day heroics which major leagues of the region will be hard pressed to match. The feat is even more remarkable if you take into consideration that the Coover based club did not win a single title last season in what was considered a rebuilding year for the club. Head coach Stuart Charles Fervier told News 4 Sports about that rebuild. We decided then as a club, the management and the staff, that we would try to develop a young team. And that was the reason why the decision was made. And um, you could see now this year, you know, we exceeded all expectations, you know, and, 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 and won the, the, the national championship, which we are very proud of. With an average age of 20, the Savanetta boys were easily the youngest team in the league. The only player crossing the 30-year barrier being longtime defender Elijah Joseph. Coach Flavier has high expectations for his charges. We definitely want to improve the business side of the club too. So a lot of these players, we have AMAC, some of them for professional contracts out of Trinidad and Tobago that will help the club sustain itself. And the younger ones coming up, we we hoping that we could develop them to the level where we could maintain our quality and our position in, in Trinidad and Tobago football. Club president David John Williams also lauded his youngsters and reiterated the need for the league. The youths have done as well um, and we see that they have a big future in the game not only for club level but at the national level too. And the professional league has done a lot for, for the players and the development of Trinidad and Tobago football. And it, it must be sustained um, for Trinidad football to continue. The W Connection boss is in full support of the joint initiative by the league and the Ministry of Sport to take pro football back to the communities. I think football has to go back to the community. I think um, 
it's going to be a big lift for the professional game in Trinidad and Tobago if the football goes back to, into the community and um, uh, we get community grounds. Um, if that happens, uh, you find that the teams will be much more self-sustainable and um, the crowds will be able to, to support the football. Um, if you look at football generally in, in England, it's really the community where people can walk to the ground. Um, it could be a Sunday evening, a Saturday afternoon. Um, f football has to go back to the community and we support that initiative 100%. Mr. John Williams also took the opportunity to commend the government for its involvement in the Pro League. I want to commend the government of Trinidad and Tobago for supporting the teams so far with the subvention that we get. Um, I think that with that continued support, the, the game is going to grow for it. I want to encourage government to, to, to get the community fields implemented as quickly as possible because at the professional level here, we see ourselves not only as a professional club, but we are doing an enormous social program in, in, in the community and um, we like to see government continue to support that. Wayne Cunningham, News for Sports. After the break, a move to healthier lifestyles by employees of the Ministry of Work. Stay with us. We are reporting from communities across the country. People are calling Nalis Libraries their library. Tell me, why is Nalis your library? My library is where I can have fun learning. My library is helping me earn better grades with online research resources. My library is my gateway to the world of information. My library is providing access to the differently able. As a visually impaired person, I can envision limitless possibilities. My library is making my world truly worldwide with free internet access. My library is helping me keep an eye on my health with access to the virtual health library via the Nalis website. Nalis is my library! Personal music players can stop you from being aware of your surroundings. <laughs> Always be aware of your surroundings and periodically look over your shoulder to prevent anyone from sneaking up on you. Remember, crime prevention is everyone's business. A message from the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. Welcome back. Staff of the Ministry of Works and Infrastructure will now be able to lead healthier lifestyles. This from Works and Infrastructure Minister, the Honorable Jack Warner, who spoke at the opening ceremony of a health and wellness facility at the Ministry's headquarters. Verna Barth tells us more. Works and Infrastructure Minister Jack Warner is boasting that employees at his ministry will now be leading more healthy lifestyles. He was speaking at the opening ceremony of the ministry's Health and Wellness Recreational Club at the ministry's headquarters. I walk every morning from half past two to half past three. I'm here yeah, half past two to half past three and then I shower and come to the office. All it means that I will have to do is I can come here directly from half past two. I can use the gym. And I can then go upstairs a little earlier. And therefore, for me, yes, I am more grateful than ever that this thing has, this dream has been realized. I urge all the members of staff who are here to make use of this gym. And in fact, Minister, as I was sitting down here listening to you also, I was saying that whenever you decide to have an interministerial sport day, this ministry will come first. Minister Warren is also urging the staff of his ministry to make full use of the facility. He says the Health and Wellness Club is well outfitted with a wide variety of games, including pool tables and other equipment, to assist in building both mind and body. If you see how the, the women here play limited overs cricket, if you see how, how athletic they are and so on, and therefore this gym shall go a long way in keeping us fit, and as you all know, a healthy mind, a healthy body, those things help to make you a better worker. So therefore, very briefly, Mr. Thanks very much to have your assistance, PS, once again in completing another inward project. And I look forward to seeing all of you. And do we also take people from other ministries also? Not as yet. Well, I look to see all of you from the Ministry of Post Infrastructure there from time to time. 
whether you want to play darts, you want to play pool, you want to see look at TV, you want to, of course, do some, some, some gym work, whatever it is, let us make use of this facility. Minister in the Ministry of Works and Infrastructure, Stacey Rupnarain, is urging persons to make the time to incorporate gym and exercise into their lifestyles. More and more you see a trend where employers are now recognizing the need to incorporate fitness into the lives of our employees because it creates a more all-round employee. You can relieve a lot of stress through exercise and I myself have seen the importance of fitness and exercise. I also try to incorporate into my schedule gym activities and exercise and I used to at one point in time play football and whilst it is easy sometimes even for me to make excuses and say you know what I simply don't have the time sometimes you often have to create the time and one of the advantages which you have today is that the gym has been brought directly to you Sports Minister Anil Roberts is also highlighting the importance of the gym and wellness facility for the ministry, adding that the initiative will assist in fostering teamwork among its employees. Not only is this a gym facility, as you know, the benefits for healthy lifestyle, improvement in concentration levels, ability to recover, all of that, but more importantly, it is one of the best ways to foster teamwork. And I can already see here at the Ministry of Works and Infrastructure, as we look at news, because your media team is very good, we see a lot of y'all, and a lot of the work that you're doing, it's, it's purely fantastic. Well, they get pun no. <laughs> Yes, that y'all have a great team here at the Ministry of Works and Infrastructure. It's very important. Too many times public servants get a bad name, we always hear, they're too lazy, they're in the hospital, they don't want to work, they don't want to do this, they only stamp in passport to their feet. It's a lot of rubbish, okay? Because I have a great experience with public servants at my ministry, and it's all about teamwork. We need each and every one to ensure that we serve the people. Vina Barath, News 4. Well, that's how we wrap up this edition of our News 4 Report. I'm Nicola Barito, inviting you to join us every weekday right here on News 4 for another news report. Do have yourself a wonderful evening. Goodbye.